The disciples in today's Gospel ask a very important question of Jesus. Lord, how can we know the way? As we listen to and reflect on the readings today, let us also ask this question of God and seek to find the answers the Lord provides. Let us begin our worship with the sign of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, look upon us with love. You redeem us and make us your children in Christ. Give us true freedom and bring us to the inheritance you promised. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now during those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on tables. Therefore, friends, select from among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the world. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a convert of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. The Word of the Lord. Let your 
From the first letter of Peter. Come to the Lord, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. The Word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him, and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, Show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord 
We have quite a few mottos and sayings at my workplace, but one of my favourites is this. A true teacher and leader is one who teaches themselves out of a job. This has always struck me as being the very core of the Christian philosophy and the path to true growth, that we build others up to achieve greater things than we could ever achieve ourselves. Human nature, particularly in this time, tends easily towards selfishness. Ideas of self-care, self-love and putting oneself first are promoted heavily in the media. We are taught to measure success by our public achievements and to strive for perfection, recognition and accolade. Many of us, myself included, would be hard pressed to say that we don't take some pride in being able to do something that others cannot or do not do. As Christians, we are called to be more than this. We are urged to set aside our personal glory and, as St. Peter writes in today's second reading, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. We do not have to look far for guidance on how to go about this. Christ himself is our teacher and our guide. Throughout his ministry on earth, Jesus performed many great signs, deeds and miracles. However, he did not keep this glory for himself. Everywhere he went, he taught the people, broke open the scriptures for his disciples and gave glory to the Father. Now, in today's Gospel, we see him pass this mantle on to his disciples and all believers. Having imparted the way of the Father to us through word and action, Christ not only compels us, the believers, to follow his example, but promises that we will do greater works than these if we allow God to dwell within us. Christ's example shows us that true success lies not in building ourselves up, but in building others up and allowing them to carry our ministry to new heights. When we allow God to guide our steps and give selflessly of our knowledge, time and talents, we enable others to share in the call of discipleship and bring ever greater glory to the Lord who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light.
let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Over the coming week, I invite you to ponder the ways in which you can follow the example of Christ, who shows us the way, and to purposefully act in a way that supports and builds up the people around you. We are the holy nation, God's own people, sent to proclaim Christ's work to the world. Let us reflect this calling in our every word and deed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh,